I'm going to provide you an overview of running the LSPC model. We're currently in the WASP course examples watershed LSPC folder. You'll see that there is three files and a folder in this directory. The first file is the .air file or air file, which is the meteorological information that gets read by LSPC at runtime. This file is a simple ASCII file that is in a uh, plot gen file format. And the information that's contained in here on an hourly uh, time step is precipitation, potential evaporation, air temperature, wind speed, solar radiation, dew point, and cloud cover. And basically each there's a line for each day, uh, month, year, hour on this file that gets read at runtime. So that's how the meteorological file looks like. The next file is the LSPC model itself. And then the watershed.inp file is the input file that we will run to provide the flows and loads for our example watershed that we're running. And then there's a directory up here called current. That's where the LSPC uh, result files will be written out. So let's go ahead and run LSPC. Just double click on it. This is what the LSPC interface looks like. It's fairly simple. It allows you to change a lot of uh, different parameters quickly. Sometimes you're not able to change some things in here, so you'll have to do it outside the model. So we're going to go ahead and open our watershed INP file. And what that's saying is it's generating the F tables for our stream network. There is a couple of particular things that you have to pay attention to in um, LSPC. LSPC does not allow spaces in either the directory or the directory names or the file names. That it's going to read in. So we're just going to check and make sure that everything is okay in our simulation. So I'm going to go to watershed information, weather data, data location, and we sh you should see C colon wasp underscore course examples watershed LSPC. Notice that there are no breaks in there. If you installed LSPC in it uh, or the course materials in another directory, you need to make sure that this is changed to that directory. And then the last thing you have to make sure that's changed correctly is the location of where the output's going to go. So again, it's just going to go into that current directory. So with that, we're going to go ahead and run the model. We just click on the run button and the model will take off and it'll run. It'll uh, give you a dialog box that looks like this. Okay, the model's finishing up and it's writing its results into that uh, current directory. So once it's finished, I'm going to close LSPC. And if we go into this current directory, we'll see that there's an output file for every one of the subbasins that we are simulating in our, uh, our uh, watershed. If we open up one of these files, again, it's a, just a straight ASCII file that's in that plot gen file format. And just like um, the meteorological data, this is the, uh, the information that is written out. And by position here, is where it is and what column. So we can, uh, you'll see how we process this with the spreadsheet, but we also can uh, look at the, um, the LSPC output by using the WRDB graphing program. And I would just basically op open up a data file, browse to this current directory, select one of the out files. So now it's loaded all of the LSPC basins in that directory and it shows you all of the different output. So if we wanted to plot the uh, runoff flow for uh, subbasin 698, we would select it, the runoff flow, add it to the graph, and that gives us the time series plot of the uh, predicted runoff for 698. So the next steps we'll do is we'll process this with the LSPC to WASP uh, spreadsheet. 